Hello everyone, uh, I hope that you are all enjoying the easing of uh, some of the lockdown rules. I know that I'm definitely uh, enjoying getting out a little bit more. Um, so I finally got around to doing a voiceover for this uh, giraffe time lapse, which I completed a couple of weeks ago now. Um, this piece was created purely to be... Um, to be donated to Explorers Against Extinction, who are a uh, wonderful charity that run a yearly initiative called Sketch for Survival. Um, so to enter this exhibition competition, um, you need to draw a, uh, a piece of wildlife artwork that is of an endangered animal. And it can be A4 or A3. And, um, and then you have the uh, chance of getting shortlisted to be part of the exhibition. Um, however, even if you're not shortlisted, uh, your piece still gets sold on their website and anything that it's sold for will go to raise funds uh, for the work that they do. So, um, yeah, I have been wanting to add a giraffe to my collection of wildlife pieces for a while as well. Um, so this just seemed like the perfect opportunity. I actually went to the Explorers Against Extinction um, exhibition last year and I was really quite shocked to hear about the... Um, the decline of giraffe population. Um, I think a lot of people, when we think of wildlife uh, that's endangered, we think of elephants, rhinos, tigers, um, the kind of obvious uh, animals. But um, I don't know, giraffe was never one that I really realised uh, was endangered. Um, but the numbers have fallen hugely in the past decade. So I thought this was a, um, a good opportunity to, to highlight this uh, by drawing this animal. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to uh, have a pitch black background. I have done this before and it can be very effective. However, in hindsight, I sort of wish that I'd gone about this a different way. Um, here I'm drawing on Bristol smooth paper, which doesn't have a lot of tooth to it. And I'm drawing with graphite. So it's quite challenging to get the very, very dark shades on this type of paper. Um, so to get a very, very pitch black background, I uh, needed to try a couple of different mediums, which I tested out at the top left there, as you can see, um, tried graphite and tried pan pastel. And I ended up actually going with pan pastel. Um, this was great, went on very smoothly and easily. It's quite messy. Um, but the problem was, is that because I created this very, very dark value with uh, pastel, that once I'd finished the drawing, um, it made the giraffe in graphite look very very light and the contrast was just totally wrong so I spent a lot of time at the end um, of the video which I, I didn't keep as part of this time lapse um, going back in and and adding darker values with this uh, black polychromo pencil that you can see me using here um, I would like to get to a point where I can just uh, choose exactly the right paper and pencils um, so that I don't need to kind of mix media um, I don't have a problem mixing media. I know that some people do. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'll use whatever works at the end of the day. Something that I can get quite lazy with is uh, sharpening my pencils, <laughs> um, which sounds silly, but obviously is quite important when you're drawing um, individual hairs. Um, they can get quite blunt quite quickly. And I find that, uh, that I can get lazy with um, keeping the pencils very, very sharp which was so necessary as well for this uh, giraffe's face. Uh, the bit that's out of the camera at the top at the moment, um, the giraffe's head, it's all very knobbly. Um, so you have all these hairs going in different directions. And you also had the light coming from the right-hand side. Um, so you had highlights, shadows, and all the all the hairs going in crazy directions. I kind of, kind of found it quite challenging to get this piece looking exactly right. Um, I think actually every single part of this piece was... was, was uh, quite challenging provided me with different um different kind of things to overcome i must apologize for <laughs> the wobbly camera um i use one of these i think a lot of people use them now they're one of these arms with the kind of uh, clasp at the end for your phone and um these are great because it means that you can get the 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 phone or, the, or your camera really really close to the paper which is good because it means i don't get my big head in the way <laughs> of the uh, the video but it also means that it's quite close to my shoulder or to my head and so i kept uh, bashing my head on it and sending the, the camera wobbling so sorry about that So you can see at the top here that I've kind of left the 
hefty pot um, at the top of the giraffe and it was actually that's actually what I ended up calling the piece tuft uh, because of their little <laughs> the hair at the top um I didn't know whether I was going to put the pastel down first and then uh, bring out the individual hairs with an eraser like I have done a few um up the top or if I was gonna use a uh, either a black pencil or a black pastel to actually draw in between the hairs so at this point I just kind of left left that part and carried on with the rest of the drawing um, in the hope that sort of I'd have some epiphany at some point. Um, I've probably mentioned before that I actually have got a bit addicted to drawing larger now. I absolutely love drawing large um, large animals. You can just get so much more, well, it's much easier to get more um, uh, detail in. Um, this is the largest that I could draw this piece for this uh, exhibition um, competition. So, um, but I have been thinking of doing what I did with my cheetah, which is to draw it as a big square 23 inch piece um, as well. And also hopefully then learn from the mistakes that I made in this piece um, when I draw the larger one. Um, the two pieces I've created already are the cheetah and the orangutan and they're both babies and obviously this giraffe is young as well so um, I think it would be a good opportunity to maybe add a little giraffe to that uh, to that collection. So I'll try and explain how I sort of uh, create this fur, this hair, hair texture. Um, you can't obviously just draw individual hairs because it's actually the shadows come out from in between the hairs. So I do it two different ways, which is I either draw in the hairs first, shade over the top of them and then pull out highlights with an eraser, or I will put down sort of a gray base um, use an eraser to highlight where I want the hairs to be and then go back in with a darker pencil to uh, darken those little um, spaces in between the hairs. Um, you can see here, I it's kind of like an upside down V, um, which are the darker kind of parts. And also you don't necessarily want to concentrate on trying to get each individual hair. You want to um, sort of just get the effect. So have sections of hair and then you can kind of build up the, the detail from there. So around the edge of the giraffe, um, obviously I've got the, the pastel background and then the graphite. So I sort of used a mixture of um, trying to get that pastel as close here to the neck as I could and then used an eraser to um, to bring out little hairs kind of to, to create the, the look that I got in the end. One thing I absolutely love about this giraffe is that uh, even though they're really, really young, um, they have all these sort of whiskers around their mouth um, and these thick, thick lips. And it just reminds me of um, of a little old man. So I kind of I kind of loved drawing, drawing this part. I think it's a very uh, it's a very iconic part of a giraffe. I think I know they have those massive long blue tongues as well. So once I finished this section, I um, I went in and added the black 
background and this is where I sort of started to realize that uh, the graphite giraffe was far too light against the black background um I immediately regretted adding this entire background because obviously after that as I've said before I had to go back in and add a lot more uh shading to the giraffe so um I had to be very careful about getting then uh risk getting pastel all over the actual giraffe um when I'm drawing here I've still got a tissue under my hand but eventually I realized that the pastel is quite quite a thick medium so actually um it sits on the paper really well even if you've been leaning on it it kind of covers everything um and yeah it was also uh you don't really rub pastel in it's more um I kind of pushed it into the paper um I don't have any of those little spatulas yet because I haven't started drawing um a lot in pastel definitely something I want to do that I uh I keep talking about and haven't got on with yet um but yeah so I don't have a spatula to um to apply it so I just was using my finger and use what you got and uh, and kind of pressing it into the paper as you can see here and that is sort of all I have to say about this piece at the moment I am um, I didn't film the end section where I went back in and added more detail because I needed to get very close to the paper um, and I kept hitting my head on the camera definitely need to try and sort out that issue <laughs> um, so I just turned it off um, but hopefully this has been um, insightful or entertaining or interesting or one of those things um, but yeah feel free to subscribe or like or any of that stuff um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching thank you so much bye